In this tutorial, we're going to look at vectors and matrices. These are both types of numeric array. An array is basically just a collection of objects, usually arranged in rows and columns. For example, a row vector with n columns is a 1 by n array. Let's start by creating a row vector. I'm going to call the vector my row. So let's make my row have three elements, 3, minus 5, and 0. I've used spaces here to separate the items in my row, but we can also use commas. So these two expressions are both equivalent. Double clicking on my row in the variable workspace shows the array in spreadsheet type format. Notice that MATLAB identifies that this is a 1 by 3 array because it has one row and three columns. To create a column vector, we can use a semicolon to separate the rows. This is a three by one array. If you want to see what it looks like, as well as clicking on the variable name in the workspace, you can just ask for it in the command window as well. Creation of matrices works the same way. We put in the rows one by one, separating them with semicolons. So that's the first row. the second row, and let's have a third row as well. So this is going to be a matrix with three rows and four columns. Let's click on the variable name in the workspace to see what it looks like. The MATLAB command size gives the number of rows and columns in an array. So if we type size my matrix, then we get the result 3, 4, because this array has three rows and four columns. Notice that the number of rows is given first, in common with matrix methods. If you want just the number of rows, you can type size my matrix 1 and if you want just the number of columns you can type size my matrix 2 to get the total number of elements we could multiply the number of rows and columns together but it's more convenient to use numel my matrix which gives the number of elements directly One more command that's often useful for counting is the length command. This gives the largest dimension from size. So for my matrix, it's going to give the result 4. For vectors, the commands length and numel give the same result. The ability to extract elements from arrays is a very useful feature. MATLAB adopts the indexing for matrix methods with statements like x, i, j being used to refer to the elements of an array x. The indices i and j are the row and column numbers. For example, if we want the highlighted element from my matrix, then we can type my matrix 1, 2, since this element is in the first row and the second column. If I try my matrix 1, 5, then I'll get an error. Index exceeds matrix dimensions. The array has only four columns, so the fifth column is out of bounds. Don't be afraid to experiment and pay attention to the error messages, which are shown in red text, because they're usually quite useful. 
Now suppose that we simply type my matrix 5. Mathematically this makes no sense because we didn't give both a row index and a column index. However, MATLAB does allow you to do this. There are 12 elements in the array and MATLAB will give us the fifth element. But which value do you think that is? MATLAB counts down the columns, not along the rows, and so the result will be element 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the value in the second row and second column. Most of the time it's better to give both a row index and a column index. An exception is when dealing with vectors. For example, if we take a look at my row and my column, then we can see that they both contain the same elements. And so my row 2 and my column 2 will both give the same value. This is more convenient than having to type my row 1, 2 to get the second element from the row vector, or my column 2, 1 to get the second item from the column vector. Now let's look at how we can get more than one element at once from the matrix. For example, suppose that we want the two highlighted elements in my matrix. Type the variable name, use the bracket notation for the elements that we want. We're interested in the first row and we give the column numbers as an array. So we want the second column and the fourth column. Let's add the second and fourth elements from the third row as well. Hmm. Lastly, let's have a look at the colon operator, which has a special meaning in MATLAB. We can type A colon D colon B, where A, D and B are numerical values, to create a sequence of values between A and B with common difference D. For example, 1 colon 2 colon 9 gives the values between 1 and 9 with common difference 2. This is the same result as we would get by typing 1 2 10. Since values are arranged starting from the leftmost value and adding 2 to 9 takes us beyond 10. The default difference is 1, so to generate the set of natural numbers between 3 and 10, we could just type 3 colon 10. Typing 10 colon 1 gives an empty vector, because 10 is bigger than 1, and MATLAB tries to use the default difference of 1. If we want a reversed sequence, we can simply use a negative step size. The colon operator is especially useful for accessing elements of arrays. To demonstrate it, I'll first create an array of random numbers. I'll call the array M. This expression will create a 50 by 30 array of pseudo-random integers in the range from 0 to 99. We can have a look at the array in the variable editor. First, we'll try to access the elements in rows 1 and 2, in columns from 10 to 20. So we want the first and second rows, and we want all of the columns from 10 to 20. To get the whole of these two rows, we could type 1 to 30 in the column index, because there are 30 columns. However, MATLAB also allows us to refer to the last row or column by using END. So we don't need to know how many columns are in the array. It gets better. MATLAB allows us to simply use a colon by itself to refer to a whole row or a whole column. So this expression here 
we'll get the whole of the first two rows. Similarly, to get the last two columns, we could type M colon, because we want all rows, and end minus one to end to get the last two columns.